Hey YouTube, it's the Morning Brew. Happy Tuesday. Happy... Mm. Mm. Oh god, didn't sleep much last night. Hey, Toy Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yes, Toy Tuesday. I'm not kidding when I said I didn't sleep enough. <clears throat> it's a second cup of coffee, I can't wake up. Anyways, it's Toy Tuesday, and you know what that means. Go to the Geek SEO Facebook. Share some fond toy memories. And, you know, we're all geeks here. It, there's something out there you want to talk about. Personally, um, I might actually bring up a very obscure toy this time around that was incredibly expensive when I was a kid. But American kids probably won't be able to relate much to it. But, other than that, um... On the personal level, nothing to report. Uh, geez, yeah, really, <laughs> nothing to report this time. Uh, my girls are on season five of Supernatural, which is crazy. And I'm not sure what to talk about today outside of the news. Uh. Oh. <laughs> um. I had some fun times playing Hearthstone again, for one big reason. I've I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, I've gotten very familiar with the Hunter class, and so now I kind of know, knowing I know what cards by by, mem by memory now are in my deck. So I know what to expect uh, if I have a certain hand. <laughs> Three times yesterday, people thought they had me cornered. People thought they were going to just bitch slap me into the submission. I keep holding off on my cards uh, in certain games, especially with certain classes. So, uh, three different times out of the five or six matches I played yesterday, uh, I let somebody corner, make them think they cornered me by hitting me down to like 10, 12 life points, period. And... By the time I had enough crystals to make my move, not only do I make my move, but within two moves, I essentially drop them to a two, from 30 to two, with not even a, not missing a beat. In some cases, dropping them from 20 something down to two in one round. <laughs> and what I love is, they get so mad that they either kill themselves off and concede the game or or they, 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 they continue to try and ascent and do a very harsh assault but they don't realize that I can make the moves that I made the first time all over again because I have enough uh, in my deck to do it. So it's just, it's the, the strategy of the game is so fun. If you're not playing and if you're a person like me that grew up with card games, um, like I like back on the Harry Potter movies first came out, uh, there was a Harry Potter card game uh, by Wizards of the Coast, and I freaking loved it. I played the hell out of it, <clears throat> and I mean, I I bought a box or two of cards in my lifetime. Not to mention, a hand, uh, I was lucky enough to be to have a handful of rare cards, and I still have them actually. Um, and I still know how to play. I just don't play. And I know a lot of people get into Magic the Gathering, and I can't. The game is... The game tends to be too complex, and I'm not about to start collecting Magic the Gathering cards and trying to learn how to play the game while friends of mine have been playing for 10, 12 years. Or even longer. So, <clears throat> with that, when I heard about Hearthstone, I didn't really get into it right away. In fact, it was... I was offered to... Uh, Play test the beta and such by Blizzard uh, through press and media outlets, and I still turn it down. I just was not interested. So now that I'm playing, I'm enjoying the hell out of it, and I'm not, I don't regret it. I regret that I didn't get any of the promo stuff. If I would have had any inclination that I would have enjoyed the game more than I thought, I would have gotten into it just to get some of the early access stuff. But it's okay. It's still a fun game. I'm still enjoying the heck out of it, and. I've gotten into arena play, which I didn't realize gave you gold and cards after you played your three uh, 
lost your three matches or continued winning. If you win, I didn't win a single match. I hate, I really hate having to build a deck from scratch. Anyways, so let's get on to the news. A lot of hard stone talk this, in the next few weeks. Ah. So today I got two video game heavy stories and one TV story that involves beautiful women nude. So that's the last story of the show. That means you have to stick it out to the end. I am that evil. I'm not going to talk about it till the very end. So to start off the morning, Philips wins two out of the three patent lawsuits against Nintendo in the UK. Those patents I've talked about before are the motion, interfa motion interface gaming pl uh, patents. Essentially the Wiimote, Wiimote Plus and whatnot. Now, Philips and Nintendo used to have a pretty good relationship. If you remember the Philips CDI where they brutally raped and murdered Mario and Zelda. And then um, proceeded to basically screw Nintendo over because they were supposed to create... Uh, history tells us that... <laughs> there's a prof professor nerd term. Uh... Isn't that a character in The Simpsons? Anyway. Uh, history tells us that Nintendo and Sony originally teamed up to create a CD-based peripheral to add to the Super Nintendo. Now, if you didn't know, if you still have a Super Nintendo, flip it upside down. It has a huge outlet to plug something into it or plug it onto something. In fact, most of Nintendo's consoles usually did. My GameCube has a Game Boy adapter and the Ethernet modem attachment. Why not? Found them. So that I could afford them. Got them. I use. I still use to this day the Game Boy adapter because it's a Game Boy Game Boy Advance. So why not? Play my my wonderful you know Game Boy Advance games on the big screen versus trying to find my charger for my you know Game Boy Advance SP. Well, things went south with Sony. And Nintendo passed on the on the device. Well, unfortunately, that mean that means that Int that Nintendo brushed them off, and Sony said, "Well, screw you. We'll still make something." And why did Sony go French for a second? Anyways, Sony obviously proceeded to create the original PlayStation, and we all know how that came about. Or I mean, we all know what's going on with that. PlayStation Four delete my millions of copies. Our systems sold. Anyways, Nintendo then proceeded to make business with Philips. Well, part of the Philips-Nintendo agreement was that Philips was to create a peripheral as long as Nintendo allowed Philips to use their mascots on their gaming system and help it sell. If you ever played the, CD, the Philips CDI, it is the most horrendous interface in the world, most sluggish loading times in the world. It was just a terrible system all around, just horrible. And I think it cost like 600 bucks back then. Something like that. I mean, there's no, no 3DO with like a couple thousand, I think. But anyways. So, it's kind of ironic to see that Nintendo and Philips are at it again. Many people are making the speculations and jokes that this is like two former lovers still battling it out 20 years later. Well, it kind of is. Because not only has Philips won the cases... But now they're asking the UK courts to basically blockade any importation of the Nintendo Wii U into the United States. <clears throat> now, this is something that could happen, but thankfully it also could be tied up in court for years before it actually takes effect. Sadly, this could also be caught up in court so bad that they do block it and we don't see a Wii U importation for a good year. The that one being the least likely scenario. The issue now becomes that Nintendo has basically shown us in E3 that they have a huge lineup coming up and a lot of people I know are starting to look at the Wii U a second time and thinking maybe I should pick one up. Now this could make or break Nintendo in a sense. Now Nintendo has uh, Nintendo's financials have been analyzed over and over again and Speculation is that Nintendo could keep going broke the way it's been going broke till 2084. 
and still stay strong. Um, but the thing is that they have so much writing on this year to make the Wii U a hit. So many games, so many announcements, and it would be really sad to see that Philips somehow managed to take down the giant. It wasn't Microsoft, it wasn't Sony, it was freaking Philips who doesn't even have a gaming console. Hmm. Sad times. So, let's hope Nintendo can somehow pull their collective heads out of their butts, and Philips can pull their collective fist out of it too. And just get past this. Anyway, in other video game news, this is exciting for some people, and I'm hoping that other people will feel the same way. But Illinois uh, University, uh, Robert Robert Warren's University. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you could hear that, but that's horrible neck popping. Ah, <sighs> Robert Warren's University in Illinois has become the first university to implement esports into their sports regimen and scholarship program. Now. They have officially added League of Legends as part of their, of their eSports, and basically you get a 50% ride on your room and board, which has been estimated to be about $19,000 for your scholarship. Not a bad deal when you consider all things. Now, scholarships are a little bit tricky, as you, a lot of you may or may not know, especially when it comes to athletic scholarships, because if your grades drop, you get dropped. And if your performance, your performance uh, on the field drops, your scholarship gets dropped. You get injured, you get dropped. So this is basically you're going to be working to earn the scholarship by playing League of Legends while going to college. So get on those damn computers. It's a free-to-play game, and my kid's going to start today. Um, but this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, we've had sponsorships, and we've had... Uh, Things like that happen where they do give you scholarships to go to college and such. But this is the first time a university takes this on. Now, I've had this conversation with many friends, including my fellow admin on the on the uh, Geek Castillo fan page, uh, Meg, about how ridiculous this is. Well, it's not as ridiculous as you would think. Many people may not know this game, and yet many people may be very familiar with this game. Uh, Ragnarok, a Korean-developed game is basically the most played game out there uh, overshadowing World of Warcraft as well um, because this game literally has been doing worldwide combat tournaments for years I remember hearing about their tournaments back in 2006 2007 and they'd already been around for a year for a couple of years at least the US team had been around for a couple of years now the game has a very 16-bit uh, era look to it very Super Nintendo-ish but so does Maple Story, and people love that game. Um, so, anyways, <clears throat> what I was getting to is, in Korea, uh, supposedly, and I don't remember specifically what other countries, but many countries have it where their teams not only practice every day, but they also live together. And their job is to practice and win tournaments for their country, much like national athletes would do here. Now, what's interesting is the U.S. has been in this for a while, and we've never really heard of it unless you're in the know with the games. So it's kind of nice to see a university taking it so seriously that they offer up a scholarship. Now, what does this mean for the near future? Maybe other universities will also be taking on the, the mantle and start handing out scholarships to people who, you know, are really good at League of Legends, or really good at Hearthstone, or really good at, I don't know, first-person shooter games, Titanfall? Hard to say. I highly doubt a lot, a lot of the trend games will be getting into that. I mean, let's face it, Halo Boys, as much as you want Halo to be a competitive tournament kind of game, I doubt it's going to get you a scholarship. But League of Legends, I can totally see why. Dota might get there. Like I say, Hearthstone's a pretty good chance. I mean, technically, you can, you know, play, it can be played anywhere on anything. I mean, freaking iPad works. Don't even want to talk about my iPad. Hmm. So, fun times and, you know, scholarships abroad. Alright, now here comes the story you've been waiting for this entire 15-ish minutes. Nude celebrity photos. Karen Gillen. Uh, Karen Gillen, I guess that's how you pronounce it. From Doctor Who fame, a.k.a. Amy Pond, took a nude selfie. Doesn't she look... 
Right here. Hey. Over here. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. She looked absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Anyways, the selfie, which she just absolutely looks amazing, uh, wearing a beautiful gold body necklace covering her uh, <clears throat> bosom with one hand and taking the selfie picture with the other while doing a wonderful pout with her ruby red lips is for her new sitcom Selfie, uh, which is basically a reimagining or retelling or whatever you want to call it of My Fair Lady. Now if you're not familiar with My Fair Lady, essentially you take a self-indulged uh, girl and turn her into the dream girl you've always wanted. Yeah. No. I've got my dream girl. Anyways. Um, the show has an interesting premise because she plays, uh, let me see her name, is Eliza Dooley, who is obsessed with social media and selfies, taking them everywhere. You know, hashtagging everything, Instagramming this, Instagramming that, Facebook this, Facebook that. Well, something occurs in the trailer, and you can click the link and all that stuff. And suddenly Eliza becomes a laughing stock. Well, what you find out is that Eliza was at in high school, kind of an ugly duckling. Nobody mu much cared to pay attention to her. Nobody much cared to ask her out. Um, and of course, she becomes the beautiful swan that she is now. But unfortunately, that somewhat makes her a narcissistic biatch. <laughs> uh, so self-indulgent, so narcissistic that she. Hi, you know, basically doesn't know what to do with her life once it crumbles down that as she puts it <clears throat> um, you can get as many likes and as many friends that doesn't mean there truly are your friends it is what she said uh, <clears throat> and then there was a funny line where there's something along the lines in the trailer of a, put up your hair put up the girls and get as many likes uh, but anyways uh, the show is also starring uh, John Cho, uh, who you may know as Mr. Zulu in the Star Trek uh, movie series, or Helen Kumar. You take your pick of which John Cho you want to acknowledge. Anyways, he stars as Henry Higgins, a marketing expert who basically is going to help her revamp her entire image. Um, it's much like My Fair Lady, and I think uh, the show shows... The show has some promise. Now I really don't know what her comedic chops are and uh, her her American accent I don't know it, it's a little bit odd. It's, it throws me off a little bit because you know we heard Amy Pond's voice we heard Karen's voice and it, it's I'm gonna give this show a fair chance I'm gonna watch it be, mainly because of both of them not just to check out Karen strutting her stuff and being absolutely gorgeous but John Cho is also one of my favorite actors so and he has comedic chops I, lo I love his work I think he's he's done some great stuff in the past and honestly I'm gonna give the show a chance it's set to air on ABC later this year um, I for the life of me cannot find a set date to air but it did say later in 2014 excuse me ah. Now, am I going to tune in? Yes, definitely. I'm going to tune in. going to watch it. going to love it. I'm going to enjoy it. So, again, the 20 minute mark. I don't know how to keep doing it. Heartstone. That's how I did it. Anyways, so enjoy the trailer. Click on the pictures, all that good stuff. That's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you go to Facebook and check us out. Go to Twitter. Follow me. And, of course, I'll see you next time, next video, or whenever that is. Until then, do us a favor, enjoy your brew. Alright, making it really quick, because I know the video's already taken so long to pass. I uh, just want to hear your thoughts on Philips and Nintendo uh, basically fat battling it out. Do you think that the Wii U is going to be basically embargoed to not come into the States due to this lawsuit? Or do you hope that it's just going to pass and we can all purchase our systems whenever we want as we please? Uh, Illinois, Robert... Uh, Orange University and their scholarship. What are your thoughts? What games do you think should be in the competitive market for pro gaming and allowing you to get a scholarship outside of sponsorship from companies like EA and such? 
And last but not least, the beautiful, the gorgeous Karen Gillan. Uh, in the TV show Selfie, what are your thoughts? Do you manage to pay attention to the story outside of just staring at her picture the way I did? That's <laughs> hard to say, isn't it? Anyways, <clears throat> that's it for today. Of course, do the subscribe and the like and the share. And thank you so much for the support. Thank you to all to almost 20 subscribers for this morning. Um, again, I can't. You can't imagine how much that means to me. That we're we're growing steadily and ever so so much. And um, thank you for tuning in every day. And again, from the bottom of my heart to everyone out there for watching. Thank you so much. And take care.